I'd like to welcome Professor John Prinius. Professor Prinius, can you give us a summary of your 2009 Charcot lecture entitled The Pathogenesis of Relapsing and Remitting MS Versions 1 to 5 and Counting? Well, in the uh, 2007 uh, Charcot lecture, uh, Professor Alistair Compston dealt chiefly with the epidemiology of MS uh, and the rationale behind uh, metho current methods of treating the disease. Now, the, in the present lecture, uh, I'm going to deal or speak chiefly about the pathology of the disease, uh, that is the changes that occur in the brain and spinal cord in MS, and the various versions that over time have led us to our present view of the changes that occur in the central nervous system in this disease. Now the story uh, begins of course with Charcot. Now writing in, uh, the, uh, in about 1860, uh, he uh, uh, noted two features that distinguished MS from any other neurological disease known at the time. Uh, the first was that uh, throughout the central nervous system uh, there are patches of damage, plaques, that are sharply outlined and fairly large. And the second important feature that he observed was that within these areas of damage, myelin was selectively destroyed, leaving axons, that is the nerve fibres, intact. Now, his interpretation of this picture was that myelin loss was probably the result of a slow overgrowth of glial fibres. Now, by the beginning of the uh, uh, 20th century, that is in the early 1900s, by the early 1900s, work uh, chiefly by German and French neuropathologists and the uh, Scottish neuropathologist J.W. Dawson uh, produced uh, observations or allowed uh, uh, two new findings uh, to be added to Charcot's definition of MS. Uh, these were, first of all, that uh, the lesions did not begin slowly and progress, as uh, Charcot thought, but that they began acutely. And the second important feature, which in fact brings the pathological definition of the disease of multiple sclerosis to the, it, to the present definition of the disease, was the observation that the lesions are centred on blood vessels. Now this was interpreted, I think by most neuropathologists at the time, as an indication that something nasty, some noxious factor, entered the central nervous system from the blood or from around the blood vessel, passed into the tissue, destroyed myelin. The uh, options that they had at, the, at that time were pretty limited. Uh, it was suggested that perhaps this was an infectious agent, or perhaps it was a toxin like lead, or perhaps even an enzyme. I think the next important